So a few months ago, I started uh, some tomato seeds with the express uh, idea of uh, using them for clones. And uh, this is how they looked when I started my cloning project a couple of weeks ago. Uh, very healthy, looking really good. So I, everything started out good, took uh, some suckers off, you know, cut them off of the mother plants and uh, trimmed off the branches, the uh, excess branches on there. Uh, using a real nice sharp razor blade uh, to get those uh, a nice clean cut there. And uh, I probably should have cut that other branch off there too. Is isn't really necessary to keep on, but uh, just, you know, if you're done, throw it in water and grab another uh, one or two, or in this case, I, I took 16 total clones off of those uh, mothers that were in there. Uh, and each one trimmed them up real nice and got them ready for uh, the rest of the procedure. Uh, and I like to make them about uh, five or six inches long. Um, and this one I just cut off a little too long, so I trimmed it up a bit. So yeah, like I said, uh, I like to make them about five inches uh, uh, long, about the same height that all, you know, all of them the same height and whatnot. And this is a uh, rooting compound or rooting gel. It's Clonex. And uh, there's powder, there's gel. This is a bit uh, almost like ridiculously expensive. I'm sure the powder is a bit more reasonable. But uh, roll it around in there, and then uh, this is where I started to go wrong. Uh, put it in my rock wool cubes. These are two by two cubes. And um, then I put them in my tent with uh, the lights and whatnot. Um, and this is the way I've done it before. I've just not done it with the rock wool cubes. I've done it with an aeroponic system. And this is where I kind of went wrong. I put these under lights uh, without a humidity dome on them. I should have put the humidity dome on right away, kept them in the dark, let them recover a bit from the traumatic experience of getting their limbs cut off and whatnot. Um, and I, uh, you know, this is just not the right way to do it. You can see they're all limpy. This is over about uh, four or five days here. Uh, I tried to put the humidity dome on to bring them back a little bit, but as it turned out, um, they did not uh, fare very well. Some of them did okay. Uh, I think I ended up with a total of eight uh, good clones, so about 50% uh, success rate or 50% failure rate, I suppose. It depends on how you look at things. Um, but yeah, I, uh, normally this is not the way I would do it. Uh, I wouldn't put them in these rock wall cubes. I would do it in a aeroponic cloner that I'll talk about in just a sec. But So here I'm, I'm sort of... Um, Checking to see which ones have taken root and which ones haven't, uh, you know, and you can just sort of tug them a little bit, and you can tell that they're just going to pull right out. And you know, the, the, instead of rooting, they rot like that. Um, you can sort of see down into the uh, the rock wall if there's little roots coming out too. So I just go through each one, give it a little tug. If it pulls out, it's a uh, you know, it's not going to work. And if it if it resists, then there, there's some roots in there keeping it in. And, you know, those that I'm taking out there, I could actually cut that bad spot off and put them in the uh, aeroponic cloner that I'm used to doing and probably salvage them. But uh, to be honest, I just uh, uh, I don't really have enough room for all these to begin with, so it doesn't hurt that I lost a few. Um, like I said, I ended up with about 50% success rate or 50% failure rate. Um, so I, had, uh, I, I kept actually four of them for myself. And uh, I've got four, or I'm sorry, two that I uh, just set outside just to see transplanted and kept outside just to see what they would do, even though it's a little cold yet, a little early. And two I gave to, uh, to a friend here at work. So and this is my aeroponic cloner uh, that I have used in the past, and it works really well. Uh, you just put, a, you know, put uh, probably an inch of the stem down into the cloner itself, and it sprays uh, water onto the, uh, the bottom of the stem and it promotes the root growth uh, right off of there and it works really really well i've i've uh, in the past if i had all 24 full i might lose one or two but the bulk of them uh, work uh, you know root really nicely and they take off really well but um, i should have done that this year i did not uh, but you know it's all good uh, you live you learn you don't uh, can't win them all i suppose but certainly the way I cloned these things this year is not the way I want to do it in the future. So here's kind of where we stand right now. Um, I got uh, my Ned Starks, my King of the Norse uh, peppers back there. This is the uh, 
um, the ground cherry and looking really nice. I love the look of this plant. It looks very pretty. Uh, those are my peppers. You got your Ned Starks back there. You got uh, your uh, Carmen's. This is the tomato tent. And um, one thing to, to notice about the tomato tent, and I'll point it out here in this other picture, is this monster in the back. This is a Jasper. There are actually three other Jaspers in this tent. And this is the only one that is just massive like this just so tall uh, and this actually was taken a couple of days ago right now toward the top it's starting to flower already and uh, i mean that thing is twice as tall as everything else uh, in that uh, in that tent and i don't know why but that's just crazy i'm thinking about taking uh, a clone off of there and uh, maybe seeing what it does somewhere else if uh, if it's just as prolific or just not really prolific i guess but just as tall but anyway that's what we got going this week and uh, appreciate you taking the time to check it out and uh, soon we'll be transplanting these things so looking forward to that have a good week see you